Hey, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, here to separate the bowl of facts from the myths. You may have seen the hype across every 24-hour news channel with pictures such as these accompanied by news correspondents scaring people to thinking we're in the verge of an Ebola pandemic. The truth is far from what the news portrays. To dispel the hype, we need to understand the facts about Ebola. By no means is Ebola a mild disease and is in fact considered a Class A bioterrorism agent because of its devastating consequences. Ebola is part of a class of viruses called phyloviruses. Phylovirus means thread-like virus. Ebola is a non-segmented, negative strain, single-stranded RNA virus. It is one of the many diseases that can lead to hemorrhagic fevers. Other diseases that are important to consider when dealing with hemorrhagic fever include dengue fever, rift valley fever, Lassa fever, yellow fever, and Crimean Congo fever. In addition, Ebola can cause septic shock with some outbreaks reaching a mortality rate of about 80 to 90 percent. Now, if that did not make you feel all warm and tingly inside, well, this is probably not going to help either. Ebola hemorrhagic fever is primarily distributed through Central Africa with isolated cases in other countries, but almost all are due to exposure to endemic areas. These areas tend to have poor access to healthcare and resources making outbreaks every few years a regular occurrence. In fact, Ebola is comprised of several strains. The Zaire strain has the highest mortality rate of 60 to 80 percent and was first identified in 1976. The second deadliest strain is the Sudan strain with a mortality rate of 50 percent and is primarily located around Sudan. In addition, there is an Ivory Coast strain that has only infected one patient ever and the patient survived. Actually, they contracted the strain while doing an autopsy on an infected chimpanzee. Related to the Ivory Coast strain is the Bundigbuyo strain, which has a 30% mortality rate. And finally, the only Ebola virus that has a reservoir outside Africa is the Renton strain. The reservoir for this strain is in the Philippines and is not seen in Africa. This strain affects only non-humans and causes an asymptomatic illness in humans. Well, there used to be a great mystery that surrounded Ebola, and this was regarding its origin. Viruses tend to have reservoir or hosts who help spread the virus without killing the host. So a reservoir for any virus is an animal or insect that has some resistance to the virus and allows it spread as the reservoir migrates. It was believed that non-human primates like chimpanzees were the reservoir for Ebola, but they were found to be just as susceptible to Ebola as we are, making them an unlikely reservoir. Luckily, in Uganda, bats were captured that were known to be carrying Ebola strains. We know that bats already are a reservoir for rabies, which is another RNA virus, and it seems they are the most likely reservoir for Ebola. So how does Ebola spread? Ebola spreads by direct person-to-person -person contact with infected fluid, including sweat. There is an incubation period of up to two to three weeks. As long as the patient is asymptomatic, they generally cannot spread the virus. When the patient becomes symptomatic, they become sick so quickly that they are usually bedbound, limiting their exposure to others. Ebola is not an airborne disease for humans, though there are reports of Ebola spreading from non-human primates to other non-human primates via droplets, like from a cough or sneeze. In addition, mosquitoes do not carry Ebola. In fact, Ebola is very inefficient at spreading from person to person. With its poor transmission rate and heavy mortality rates, Ebola outbreaks quickly pass without significant spread. What are the symptoms of Ebola hemorrhagic fever? Well, Ebola attacks quickly, leading to fever, chills, nausea, and vomiting. The fevers can sometimes cause a slow heart rate or bradycardia, which is also a phenomenon seen in typhoid. Ebola is termed a hemorrhagic fever for a reason and can cause defects in the body's ability to form clots leading to bleeding. In addition, 
Ebola can also lead to liver failure and suppress the immune system. How is Ebola diagnosed? Well, thanks to brave researchers and willing doctors, there's a blood test that uses PCR to relatively quickly detect Ebola in the bloodstream. Now, that may be comforting to the general population, but what about those people who are stuck in endemic areas? What treatments are available? Well, unfortunately, the main treatment is supportive care. This means IV fluids and symptom control. In the past, serum from patients who survived an infection were transfused into infected patients with mixed results and no definite proven efficacy. The U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Disease has developed a tobacco plant that produces mouse antibodies to Ebola, helping the immune system tag the virus for destruction. The new formulation is called ZMAP and has done well in studies with non-human primates, but is still under investigation. So though Ebola is a deadly disease, its ineffective transmission and unfortunately its high mortality rate prevent it from being a global killer like influenza, despite what the media is conveying. Well, I hope this video was informative. If you like this video, make sure to share this video with your friends, give this video a like, leave any questions or comments down below, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.